Alien Isolation is widely known as a very creepy, atmospheric and many say subliminal game, but from what I've seen there's been very little in the way of effective effort to break down the detailed psychology of how the game achieves its incredibly powerful emotional effect. It's not just about the alien itself, because even in drawn out, uneventful sections where the alien threat isn't present, the game still manages to consistently induce anxiety and unease. And it keeps this up pretty much all the way through the game, which is quite an achievement. Now, I have posted a couple of videos before that break the psychological ice of this game, but there's so much more that I haven't talked about yet. And one of the game's psychological tricks is its use of in-game posters placed around the sets to convey subliminal messages to the gamer. There must be nearly a hundred different posters, or maybe more, and most of them are present multiple times across different environments of the Sevastopol station. They're quite varied, and sometimes they seem to be context-specific. Some of them are confusing, some of them are funny, and some are just downright creepy. About a week ago, I posted a short video inviting you folks to give your interpretation of six different in-game posters that I'd selected for a study. And you certainly didn't disappoint in your replies, which were varied, sometimes detailed, and sometimes rapidly to the point. Many of you came up with interpretations very different to my own initial thoughts, and some of them were quite persuasive, and some interpretations repeated across multiple comments, but worded differently, of course. So in this video, I'm going to go over what I consider to be the most interesting and plausible interpretations that you folks gave of these six posters, and I'll add a few thoughts of my own about them too. And after that, I'll give you my interpretations of a handful of the other in-game posters. So let's get started. Poster one is the one that I just called Grey Man. Uh, this was a tough one to start with because there's so much to consider. I took screenshots of about 15 interesting comments you folks made about this one, and they were surprisingly varied. Some of you interpreted the grey man as facing toward us, and one or two others said that he might be facing backward. I think he's facing forward personally on account of the lower angle. If his back were to us, then his shoulders would be higher and his head lower. A big question is who or what the figure symbolises. In fact, I think that's key to figuring out the whole picture. Some of you considered him to symbolise the people who work on the station, the androids, the corporate bosses, the alien itself, or even the player of the game in a sort of meta-commentary. There are various other in-game posters that depict either the corporate bosses, the workers, or the androids as featureless silhouettes and usually in grey, so in this case any of those might apply. Another frequent poster shows a guy on the station as a black silhouette against the gas giant planet, but with his back to us. So there's lots of vague identity figures in the posters, and probably with different meanings, and depending on the context sometimes. Pretty much everyone commenting seemed to perceive the grey ball at the bottom to just be a planet or moon, and I agree with that, nobody gave any other interpretation of it. But the sun disk in the back uh, got a lot of varied interpretation. In fact, me just calling it a sun disk is an interpretation. Some pointed out the halo effect, giving the impression of the grey figure having spiritually ascended in some way, or thinking that he has. Some mentioned that the design within the sun disk gives the impression of an alien inside an egg. And here's the full version of that sun disk, showing that it is indeed the S logo for the Siegs and Corporation that dominates life on the station. Some pointed out that this gold disc also appears to symbolise an atom on account of the non-equatorial orbits of little moons around it. But for me the most surprising, why didn't I think of that interpretation, given by several of you, is that it's an imposing guy. Some of you mentioned it to be the surveillance threat ever present on the station, which would be a corporate threat. Commenter Francis Rickard pointed out that it's similar to the watching guy metaphors found in the air vents. That was a good one. Kelvin Hunting and a couple of others noted the parallel between the big sun disc eye and the shining yellow eyes of the working Joe androids. I quite like that. And some said they think it represents the alien eye ever watching. And I agree with all three of those interpretations being that the threats of the corporation, the alien and the working Joe androids all seem to be generally cross-symbolised in the narrative anyway, just as they were in the original Alien movie. That movie didn't have working Joes, but it did have the android Ash, who had Giga-esque, semi-organic, semi-technological innards. In fact, if we go for a non-intellectualised raw emotion interpretation, then I'd say any image showing a backlit, silhouetted figure causes anxiety in the human psyche. 
We like to know who stands in front of us or is approaching us, and if we don't, there's a natural fear tapping into things like the boogeyman or wild animal threats. And I don't think that base level uh, emotional response was mentioned in the comments, so I'm throwing it in there as I think it's important and probably universal to all players. I mean, we might all look at this poster and see different things intellectually, but I think the emotional response of a, a, an unidentified threat figure, I think that would be there for most of us. In terms of the more intellectual implications, Philip Hunter gave the excellent point that the figure could represent a working Joe android standing on a planet because he had conquered it. It's a good point, and it reminds me of this poster for Empire Strikes Back, with a giant Darth Vader standing on and conquering a planet too. And I think this metaphor applies whether the figure represents an android, the corporate boss, or even the alien itself as an interplanetary conquering force. And funnily enough, many of you interpreted one of the other posters as a metaphor of Earth waiting to be eaten by an alien, but we'll come back to that later. Commenter Doug Quaid, Total Recall <laughs> reference, no doubt, uh, he kept it short and sweet by stating, Enlightened man equals God stands above all others. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think he was the only commenter to mention the important point of the grey man's domineering height position. He is viewed from a slightly low angle, and the placement of the poster positions this figure as a high dominating force over the player. Arthur Ogel took this in a slightly different direction with a nice basic summary. He said, quote, Grey man is about individual workers thinking they serve some enlightened idea by pledging their lives to some corporation, when in reality they are nothing but interchangeable cannon fodder for the corporation's goal of mining the galaxy for profit, end quote. And I think I agree with that too. Now, there are other posters and elements in the game that reinforce that anti-corporate concept. This comment by Frame Into Focus is a very good one, quite a detailed breakdown tying a lot of ideas together that we've already explored, uh, but he also gives some good breakdown of the small text at the bottom of the picture. By the way, he mentions in his comment that he has a two-hour breakdown of Eraserhead, uh, David Lynch's Eraserhead, on his channel. Uh, I have skimmed through that video a little bit because somebody recommended it to me uh, quite a while back. I've not had time to watch the whole thing, but it did look good from what I saw, so maybe you folks might want to go check that out. And perhaps the comment that most connected for me was this one by a commenter with an odd username uh, that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. I won't read the whole thing out, so just pause if you want to read it in full. Uh, his point about the name Siegson possibly referencing Sieg brain monitoring, uh, which I'd never heard of, and Sieg son, the son as in creation, offspring, uh, those were good points to which I'll add that religion often associates the son of Christ with the bright light of the sun itself. So I think that's a very good one. Before we move on to the next poster, I'll add a few extra thoughts of my own about this one. Uh, the figure and all of the other silhouetted ones present in the posters throughout the game uh, seem to be male. There are females, but virtually never silhouetted. And given the protagonist is a female, I think there's an underlying sexual threat element uh, to these blank identity male figures. The name Siegson always made me think of Seeds as well. Uh, seed son, Siegson, uh, and that would relate to the birth and creation issues regarding the engineered alien and the engineered working Joes. Some other thoughts I had are that the planet or moon being grey like the man is significant. We're not seeing a planet as lit by the sun here, it's just a flat grey disc. A dull man overseeing a dull world, bland, emotionless, dead, synthetic. The text at the bottom, which is much more readable in this shot, I think, is a meta-commentary on the player's journey through the game. Uh, pause it there if you want to and just have a quick read. And the notion of the sun as a highly charged atom surrounding this figure's head, I think, hints at the minutiae of the brain, having your mind blown, if you will, which ties in with the corporate spiritual ascendance delusion that several of you talked about in the comments. All right, so that's it for this first poster, and wow... We're already we're in at the deep end of complex symbolism. Next poster, number two, Waste Damages Profit. Comments were less complex on this one, but still quite varied. This was probably the poster I found most confusing. Obviously, the corporate greed element is there, as lots of you mentioned, but the visual composition and details are strange and unsettling for me. 
Lots of you interpreted this as a reference to the player's need to use their resources wisely in the game, not to waste them. So I guess it could say, waste damages progress through the game. A few of you mentioned a possibly subliminal alien head shape in the lower left. Several of you interpreted the mound of money as a trash heap, as if the money has delusional value given the alien threat situation. But when I first saw this poster, I thought the prominent black hole at the bottom was a toilet that money was being flushed down, or a plug hole of some kind. But one commenter mentioned that it's a tyre, and I think he was the only one who mentioned it. Maybe lots of you noticed that, but I didn't see it at all. And looking more carefully, yeah, the black shapes down there are tyres, which supports the money as trash interpretation. So this is like a garbage dump. But weirdly, it still looks like some of the money is being sucked into the black hole of the middle tyre. And for me, this feels like a foreshadow of the game's lingering threat of the player or the entire station being sucked into the terrifying gas giant planet. Maybe the orange background colour supports that. In fact, the use of the colour orange as a possible link to the gas giant threat is in one of the other posters that we're coming to as well. Some of you also interpreted the pile of money here as equivalent to a corporate version of an alien nest, which I hadn't thought of myself, but it seems to make sense. I'll also add that at a passing glance without reading and without intellectualising, the miserable colours and the unpleasant cluttered content of this poster will likely add to the sense of hopelessness and confusion for the player. Now, the comment that for me most aptly tied all this stuff together was the one by General S. Death, great name, uh, pause it and have a read. For this third poster, there was a ton of comments and varied interpretation from you folks. However, a few concepts were frequently cited. Nine times made the good point that we only know for sure that it's a rose because of the rose's thrown title above. And I'll add to that point that most players probably won't take the time to read the poster, and so the raw colours and shapes will have their own less intellectualised effect. And again, it's depressing colours, despite the, the positive pink or red in the middle. Some of you thought of the bright area in the middle as a flame, fire and the fear of burning being important factors in the game. And actually, that's an interesting bit of wordplay. I'd never noticed before that fear and fire were such similar sounding words. Fear the fire, it burns. Though the flame interpretation was less frequent in the comments, I do think it has some merit. In fact, roses being burned is a recurrent cultural symbol anyway. Searching online for interpretations of burning roses or burning flowers, some consider it symbolic of intense passion or lust, some think of it as defiled beauty, and some as the destruction of love. I think all of those concepts overlap with each other anyway. I'm not sure that the poster was designed with flames in mind though, because there's no orange in the light area in the middle. However, blinding bright light in itself, I think, has a similar visceral effect to burning by flame. After all, super intense light can have a literal burning effect on the eyes. Taking the white area as a patch of bright light, many of you made comments to the effect that this bright opening of a flower is cross-symbolised with the bright light cracked opening of an egg in the mysterious poster for the first Alien movie. I hadn't thought of that myself, but... I'm pretty sure I agree with it, having read the comments. Uh, Bruce Hunter said that this image reminded him of the symbolic rose imagery in the movie Hellraiser as well. And I had the same thought when I was looking at it initially. Oh, by the way, Hellraiser is an incredibly underrated movie. I mean, it's got a lot of fans, but hardly anybody has ever talked about the very deep psychology and symbolism in that movie. It's crammed with it just as much as Alien is, actually. I've got a couple of videos about Hellraiser here on YouTube, so check them out if you're interested. Like in Hellraiser, Alien has a lot of deep psychology to do with conflicting sensations of pain and pleasure that are present in human sexuality and in the miraculous creation of childbirth. Uh, see my paywall video, Alien, the Machinery of Existence, uh, for a deep dive on all that stuff. Uh, you can get that one on my website. The beautiful, pleasurable flower hiding the sting of thorns on a stem that fits very nicely with the beauty of the alien, along with its painful bites, slashes and stings. Some of you mentioned that in your comments, and some of you noted the sharp sting design of the rose's thorn lettering at the top of the picture, which are also written in blood red, and the possible alien head curvature included in a couple of the letters. 
And several of you mentioned the red petals as being like a blood smear, which I agree with, especially given the smudged depiction. Some of you pointed to the long streaks or cracks across the image being like an infliction upon the rose. And I'll add that it looks to me as if a giant alien hand has slashed its way across the entire image. But also the streak in the centre suddenly cuts downward jaggedly, furthering the impression of the rose cracking open like an egg. Reading too much? Yeah, maybe. But, you know, look, look at all the details we've found in these pictures. Clearly a hell of a lot of thought went into them. A few of you mentioned the sickly green background as being unpleasant, and I'll add that the background is the colour of the painful thorny stem, suggesting a threatening environment, just like the creepy space station setting of the whole game. Another take on this picture that several of you came up with that I found interesting and potentially plausible is that the image could be a subliminal facehugger, the stem being the tail and the rose section being like the curled up fingers or perhaps the blur of the facehugger jumping in our face. That still fits with the pain and beauty element of alien reproduction. As some of you also mentioned that it makes good sense of the crushed glass and candy text at the bottom of the image. We eat candy for pleasure, but to eat crushed glass would cause great internal pain, just like when an alien bursts its way out of your chest. This facehugger interpretation also drew to my attention the bulbous section of the stem, which reminds me of the bulbous stinger at the tip of the alien's tail. I don't know if the alien's tail is poisonous in its sting. Maybe it is. Um, if it is, then maybe that could account for the green in the picture. You know, green, poison. I don't know. So anyway, lots of interpretations on this poster, and yet they all seem to conceptually fit with each other. The pain and pleasure of sexuality and reproduction, as well as the general sharp ripping attacks from the alien, those all appear to be common themes in this picture. There were so many good comments about this poster, but the comment that stood out to me as the most unique was this one by Cota Painting, or Cota Painting, Cota Painting, I don't know how you pronounce that. Anyway, he gives a meta-commentary interpretation about the player's experience of pleasure and discomfort in their choice to play the game in the first place. I thought that was quite good. Oh, one more thing I'll add, which occurred to me while writing this summary of all the comments. There might be some thematic crossover with this Rose's Thorn poster and the first poster that we explored. The unpleasant vertical stem and bright and semi-beautiful rose with light emanating behind it, that strikes me as incredibly similar to the unpleasant flat grey silhouetted man with a bright sun disc halo around his head. In both instances, there seems to be a suggestion about the dangers of being hooked by false promises of pleasure or enlightenment. Poster 4, Good as Fruit. Uh, this poster got the least comments for some reason, uh, perhaps because interpretations of it were quite consistent. The threat of the alien species making its way to Earth and eating the whole human race was cited by a lot of you in the comments, hence the edible apple shape of Earth. Uh, this is supported by uh, a couple of comments about what initially looks like an oddly placed stem actually being a blackened banana, uh, its curvature reminiscent of the alien head. And we get absolutely tons of alien head curvature subliminals throughout the sets of the game anyway. I'll add that the seven spiky stars each appear to have a pair of eyes within them, and they appear to be swarming on or attacking the planet instead of just representing the cosmos. Three of them are positioned like they're stabbing into the planet. And one user commented that the stars could represent the seven crew members from the original movie. Uh, I initially dismissed that until I noticed a pair of eyes within each star, so maybe that metaphor is there. Seven people trapped with the banana alien. Lots of you mentioned the phrases written on this poster as referencing the eating of Earth or the alien having a taste of our home, as in eating the humans on the Sevastopol. Mr. Coolmug stated that the phrase good as fruit equates to good as dead, and I think I certainly agree with that one. Patrick Doherty mentioned the sickly green background, to which I'll add, is similar to the dark green of the Rose's Thorn poster. Whoever depicts space as dark green, I can't think of any instances. I'll also add that the continents of Earth would normally be green in a cartoonish depiction, but here they are black, unpleasant, like the aliens have already conquered every corner of Earth, or as if the fruit is rotting. Kelvin Casing mentioned the angles of Earth and the bog letters as being uh, possibly linked with the game's disorientation themes. Yeah, that could be true. A few of you hinted at an Adam and Eve forbidden fruit interpretation, uh, which is interesting and frankly is always tempting whenever an apple is used uh, in a piece of artwork. 
but I didn't find any detailed elaboration on that. Uh, some of you also interpreted this poster in terms of corporate marketing implications, uh, such as this one by Movie Archaeologist. Uh, check out his channel, by the way. He's got some good film analysis vids on there. Oh, a couple of little extra thoughts of my own. We associate reds and yellows with ripe fruit, hence the lettering. But the reason green is often cited as sickly is because in the context of fruit, it's usually a sign of rotting fruit. And we have the rotten looking banana there as well. So any attempt at presenting the pleasantness of ripe fruit here is sort of sabotaged by the depiction of space itself as green, rotten. Uh, there even seems to be some wet or dirty patches in the green areas of this poster. And the miserable dark wall that the poster is placed on adds to the morbidness. Maybe even the darkness of space. Okay, so poster five, the Grim Reaper. Now, I considered this one uh, much easier to interpret than the others, and I threw it in there for balance, given the crypticness of the other ones. And nevertheless, you folks still came up with some ideas that I hadn't considered. The obvious one that most of you mentioned is the Grim Reaper as a symbol of both death and the alien, uh, being that the alien design originally had a human skull under the frontal dome, and that seemed to represent death as well. The human skull was hardly ever visible in the Alien movie, but it was very prominent in a deleted scene, and the makers of Alien Isolation, having done thoroughly their homework on the original movie, made sure that we get to see it in lots of the Alien kills. I'll add too that Death is holding a scythe, just like the Alien has a stinger tail. I don't think any of you mentioned that. One other thing that I'll add is that while the word hazardous has its own colour, orange, which is often synonymous with anything threatening in this game, the word itself is broken up so that the word hazard is inside the Grim Reaper's head. The Reaper is the hazard, of course. The caption says, stay focused, distraction can be hazardous. As several of you mentioned that the game often tries to distract the player so as to get them killed by the alien. Uh, General Esdeath gave a good summary of this, and something I totally missed, which is mentioned by Ronald Hellman and Kelvin Casing, is that the beakers likely contain acid. The alien has acid for blood. It's also bioengineered, which supports a suggestion that some of you made that this poster is a warning about the dangers of irresponsible research. I'll add to that the presence of the Siegs and Company logo, which is placed over the acid beakers at the bottom. That logo is in the same colour as the word hazardous, associating the alien threat with the company itself, and the orange lines framing the whole picture from top to bottom. Uh, I think that subtly reinforces that concept, the connection between uh, Siegson and Hazard. One more thing I'll add that I don't think anybody commented on is the bald, skull-like face of the scientist himself, as if the Grim Reaper is his Jungian shadow. My fave comment on this poster comes from Neuron Activation, <laughs> another good username. He points to the amusing parallel that the poster itself is distracting to the player, thus running the risk of an alien kill if you stare at it too long. And I was in a being hunted by the alien section of the game when I captured footage of this poster. Right, and finally, poster six, Vista. Uh, your interpretations on this one were probably the most consistent of all six posters, Lots of you mentioned the angles of the landscapes conveying disorientation, which occurs for the player in many spinning and falling sequences of the game. Lots of you mentioned that the locations look drab and unpleasant, not places you'd actually want to go, which keeps up a sense of doom for the player. Lots of you mentioned the threatening jagged rocks of the centre photo being reminders of the sharp threats of the alien and of the rocky moon where the alien was discovered. I'll add that the second most prominent picture achieves the same threatening Jagged Rocks effect, uh, especially on account of its angle. Devon Smith said the caption, Preserved Locations and Sights, reminds him of the preserved alien derelict ship. He also mentioned the dark sky area in the central picture, either being clouds or volcanic smoke. Uh, he also noticed that the second biggest picture is actually repeated below, but in a different orientation. A couple of you mentioned that the presence of vertical orientation photographs mismatches the word vista and that these photos could represent what the player sees out the windows of the station sometimes when they're looking at the gas giant planet. 
A couple of you also mentioned the sort of whirlpool effect of the photos, uh, with them all being in uh, different orientations. Kelvin Casing said it gives the impression of dragging the player toward rocky teeth in the centre photo. And I'll take those points further. Given the orange background behind these photos, I think this whirlpool of disorientation foreshadows the station itself and thus the player being sucked into the gas giant planet. I was wondering if any of you would reach that same conclusion, uh, but I didn't find any comments to that effect. All right, so that's all six posters we've explored here in great detail. And you folks gave some excellent observations and interpretations. A lot of it was stuff that I hadn't considered. So let's have a look at some more posters and I'll give you my take on those. Uh, first up, this one labelled Apollo. I didn't get any well-lit close-ups of the small text here when I was playing, and I don't think I managed to get any better footage of this poster anywhere else in the game. However, there's similar small print text on some other posters uh, which talk about something called the Apollo Core, and we can see just about those words Apollo Core are readable at the start of the text at the bottom there. The core is described as a central hub which instructs the working Joe androids based on data from the ship's surveillance systems. In other words, it controls them. And there is another poster here that shows um, uh, an Apollo core, or an Apollo cog it looks more like, uh, which has lines going down controlling all of the uh, bland, flat android figures below. Narratively, this uh, controlling Apollo core element is important because it implies that all of the physical attacks on the player by the androids throughout the game are basically attacks by this ugly Apollo core. There's no logical basis for its physical appearance here that I can see, but in terms of subliminal themes its ugliness is very fitting. It looks to me like a giant mechanical heart with blood vessels and arteries stemming from it, and given its central decision making role we could consider it a computerised brain as well. It also has a single orange light staring out like a, a little evil eye, just as the working Joes have lit eyes. And the Apollo logo is the same orange shade at the top as the single light that we can see on the Apollo core. So I suppose maybe that little orange eye there is Apollo staring out at us, just as the murderous HAL 9000 computer had a red eye in 2001 A Space Odyssey. The sky blue background is a strange choice here, but it fits with the threatening sun eye what that we saw in this image. The sun is usually seen against blue skies if you're on Earth. I'm not really sure about that sky colour thing, but most important, I think, is that it's an ugly, threatening shape. Uh, coming across this poster in the game for the first time, I didn't know what the hell it was meant to be at all. But it looked menacing, and that's what's important. So I suspect it doubles up as a subliminal representation of the black alien with its shiny head. And there's a section right there in the middle that's like a pair of teeth. Later in the game, the player comes across this thing, which I believe to be the actual Apollo core. It has the same cable protrusions at the top, but the differences with the poster, I think, are quite telling. This one is black, like with the alien, but the actual one that we come to is lighter coloured, which makes it look like a giant egg. Uh, the player goes inside, uh, at which point there's a side opening door, which is very different to the teeth-like hole in the centre of this poster. Inside the actual big egg version, we go into a near-identical version of what Ridley Scott called the Worm Room in the original movie, and the big one lacks the orange eye. So it seems that some liberties have been taken to make the poster version more reminiscent of the alien's head facing us and ready to bite. And last thing, the sarcasm so often present in these posters as in real life <laughs> PR ads states the opposite of truth. It says, guiding our synthetics, ensuring your safety. Yeah, ensuring your death more like it. Next, let's move over to this poster, uh, which I think complements the Apollo core alien face threat. Looks like a straight up ad for coffee. First thing to hit us vividly is the very large smiling face with teeth on display. We will see large up close teeth many times in the game when the alien makes its multiple kills of the player. The size of this poster on the wall gives the same inescapable proximity face effect. Uh, the red cup likely is a subliminal suggestion of blood when the alien attacks and the four fingers of the guy's hand holding the cup well, we do get a lot of kills in which the alien's claws uh, sneak in and dominate our field of vision. 
Um, so biting and claw subliminal threat here in this whole poster. Now that's all very cool, but there's another set of implications in this poster that I find even cooler. First, the coffee brand name. Well, I think it's coffee anyway. It's called Cup of Joes. Well, surely that's a reference to the working Joe androids of the ship. Uh, and look at the block colour art style of the face. It's unpleasant. Uh, surely a crisp, clean, well-lit photo of a real human face is the way to advertise a cup of coffee. It's the way we normally see it. But this poster uses flesh colours in a blocky style. And what does that art style make this fella look like? A rubber-faced working Joe android, of course. A symbolic depiction of the workers of the ship being dehumanised uh, Apollo core controlled robots, essentially no different to the working Joes. Uh, this theme was present in the Ash character of the Alien movie. Uh, there was always an implication with him that maybe the other humans uh, are somehow like androids themselves. Especially how human he seemed to act even when he was on his own. Uh, and that implication is here in Alien Isolation too. Note also the inclusion of a dot matrix patch of white on the left of the face. Uh, it makes him look even more digital. So we have what appears to be a combined metaphor of the alien biting threat, the working Joe android threat, and the existential threat of the supposed humans being choiceless robots too. Maybe even the player as a choiceless robot. And in a way, I suppose that's kind of true because the protagonist in the game is a controlled entity. We are the Apollo core controlling the, the protagonist in the game who has a very limited set of moves and has to follow instructions that come from us via the controller or mouse and keyboard whichever you play with maybe that's getting a bit too intellectual on it remember that we have the hand in shot here too and the androids also tend to grab at and hit the player a lot uh, and last thing i want to mention here is the cup of joe's logo being tilted across a red circle uh, maybe that red circle is symbolic of the gas giant planet uh, but then maybe it's just a red circle <laughs> Uh, as, uh, what, what's the one that a lot of you post a lot of the time the old Freud quote the ironic Freud quote sometimes a cigar is just a cigar yeah and that came from the guy who saw penises everywhere but hey if a cigar is only sometimes a cigar <laughs> what is it the rest of the time heading over to the next poster in the same set again we have that blocky colour appearance making this human look like a rubber faced android remember this in the Terminator the 600 series had rubber skin. We spotted them easy. And we have that reaching out, grabbing hand again, like the android is grabbing out at us, maybe. Interpreting this guy as a subliminal foreshadow of the alien works very well, too. He's gigantic, painted much bigger than the player. His hair and his suit are black. He has dark eyes and a prominent jawline, like the alien. And the hand could be considered a claw. The celebratory smile and toast can be considered an irony too. The alien does seem to enjoy killing. It savours the hunt. And the caption about returning from somewhere, uh, like going home, it seems sarcastic too. I mean, the player ain't going nowhere in this game. And the Davenport I, I mean, Davenport Rye logo, there, it's like another evil red eye symbol. So overall, this poster and the Cup of Joe's coffee poster seem to mutually contain the same metaphors. Uh, and even this guy's suit seems ironic. The workers here don't wear suits. They dress more like the working Joe androids. So sometimes you get that with PR corporate stuff, trying to give the employees the impression that they are more highly ranked than they actually are. You know, like when they take, take a garbage man or bin man and they give them some fancy name like a uh, garbage engineer or, you know... They, often make up stupid technical sounding names for extremely basic jobs. Right, two more posters here. A toothpaste ad with a woman giving a slightly menacing smile, an exaggerated bearing of the teeth, like with the alien preparing to bite. Now, this is especially effective in dark sections of the game where you get these faces on these posters with smiling teeth and um, because it's so dark you can barely make it out so you, you just sort of uh, register the teeth um, which is more reminds us more of the alien threat. Uh, again, this person is painted much larger than the player. She's also uh, not the kind of ultra pretty cosmetic model girl that we'd normally see in a toothpaste ad. I mean, I wouldn't say she's particularly attractive. Uh, the slightly hooked nose makes her seem a bit sort of witch-like. 
Uh, and the blood red lipstick accentuates the teeth and the high corners of the mouth give the impression of a snarl rather than a smile. It's quite cleverly done. The drab brown background colour eliminates any sense of positivity concerning a toothpaste ad. <laughs> I mean, you know, brown is not a colour we associate with cleanliness. So what the hell is it doing as the background colour here? And the captions seem to be another humorous mockery of the player's predicament. Smile with confidence. <laughs> yeah, in a scenario where the alien's hunting you. Uh, the alien certainly gives plenty of dental checkup appointments for the player too. Uh, I love the subtle humour in these posters, it's really good. And it doesn't spoil the atmosphere of the game at all, it's just a nice little extra layer um, of discovery if you're looking for it. Uh, after all, a lot of the jump scare alien kills had me flinching and then laughing out loud, and I'm sure it did that for a lot of you folks too. To the right, an unusual poster to have in any supposedly secure environment such as a space station. An advert for shotgun shells. <laughs> what, do they sell shotgun shells on the station? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but at least uh, that's what I think it is. Book for buckshot, not book teeth. And a half target on the side of the box reflected to make a full target circle. On a base level, I think this poster simply reminds the player to keep a lookout for essential ammunition. Although at this early stage of the game, I guess it serves as a reminder that the player doesn't even have a shotgun for self-defense yet. Uh, we also have a dark, miserable background in brown again, uh, just like the adjacent poster of the, the toothpaste girl. And let's look at one last poster in the same set to finish off this video. Before we do, if you want to know more about the incredible depths of the first two Alien movies, then head over to my site, collativelearning.com, which is linked in the video description. I've got hours worth of material on the first two Alien movies there. And make sure to check out the other Alien Isolation game analysis vids that I have here on YouTube as well. And check out my studies of GTA 5, Doom, Mirror's Edge, Skyrim and the amazing puzzle game The Witness. Those are all here on YouTube, those videos. Um, I'll try and remember to link them in the video description if you're interested. So, cigarette ad. Again, blocky coloration of this guy seems to make him look like an android. And uh, dark hair, maybe making him synonymous with the alien threat. He has a sort of sarcastic smile and posture, like he's mocking someone, perhaps even the player. But he's also tilted so far back, he looks like he's about to slide off to the left. Maybe that's a reference to the weird positions that the alien sometimes is in when it's hiding. But also I think the gravity imbalance and the fear of sliding or falling to one's death is a big factor in many later set pieces of the game. So perhaps this is a hint of what's to come in this poster. Overall, this is a much more brightly coloured poster than the others. And as for the text, it reads, Lovingly machine rolled for your pleasure. Well, a machine can't love, so that's a bit of a sarcastic paradox. It's also a paradox that the machines in the game are actually out to hurt the player, not help them. <laughs> At the same time, the game itself is lovingly crafted both for our fear and pleasure. Note that all of the males in the poster so far had the blocky android appearance, but the female didn't. And after all, the androids of the game are all male in appearance and voice, but the protagonist is female. So, a sexual threat theme going on there, I think. You know, men as programmed sexual killers or something like that. You know, a kind of subconscious... Uh, fear of strong, physically dangerous men for women. And I'm not talking about that in any kind of political gender. This is just about basic human psychology. Right, final observations. First, the supposed positivity of these posters is offset by the fact that some of them are literally falling apart at the seams. They are tackily pasted together out of smaller printed sections instead of a single clean large print. I mean, you know, this is the future, man. You know, shouldn't they have a decent printers? <laughs> the posters are starting to decay, and later they will have graffiti on them, but even the ones that don't often have scratch marks, dirty streaks, or wet patches on them, keeping with the concept of the environment being a dirty, damp, decaying threat akin to a dark basement, or akin to a alien lair, uh, just like the sets of the first movie. And lastly, in an emergency power situation, 
one would expect the ship's lighting systems to be a lot more practical than what we see. These posters tend to be prioritised for emergency lighting, even when the rest of the sets are mostly dark. Why? Well, obviously, because the posters serve an essential psychological function for the player experience. The posters frequently nudge at us, offering bits of narrative expansion, but primarily reminding the player of the threats that await them, uh, and for those who take the time to look more carefully at the posters, they communicate deeper existential subtext. Okay, now that's a poster wrap. Hope you enjoyed this. You've been listening to Rob Eger. Please share with other fans of Alien Isolation and the original film, and head over to my website, collativelearning.com, for mountains more content on all manner of subjects, including the Alien movies. Later, folks. Stay free.